fighting for Alaska. Thank you for doing the tough job. I mean, to a person, they have, they have come up and said, and Lieutenant Governor Malott has experienced the same. So it's, it, I can't tell you how reassuring um, it is to have that happen. I mean, in Juneau, it happens a lot. Uh, and, I, and people, I just don't know. They'll just come up and stop. They'll yell across the street and wave um, and say, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. We realize we need to make some changes. Thank you for what you're doing. So that's the part that doesn't get picked up sometimes. I mean, I know people carry signs and people are upset and, and those kind of, and I understand that. I absolutely understand. You don't go in and, and, and do what I did on, uh, on the vetoes without having that kind of reaction. I understand that. I, I fully anticipated that. But I didn't anticipate it was such a strong outpouring of, of everyday Alaskans that have, have reached out personally. In, 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 a, in a restaurant, on an airplane, uh, walking down the street, and the first lady and I take a walk. In the evening, down by the dock, and they'll stop me and say, thank you, thank you what you've done. I want to thank the mayors across the state. I have had a chance to talk to a lot of mayors across the state because they have been impacted. I come from local government, my background, I understand exactly what we did. And that was, that was uh, but to a person, they've also said, thank you. We know it's a tough situation, w w you know, what can we do to help? They've immediately called emergency meetings. They immediately had to do this and do that, and make some changes, because that's what you do in local government. And so, so they're going to they're going to survive it. But but uh, I want to thank them very much. And it's been from from Kenai to Fairbanks to the Matsu, uh, Juno, all across the state. Uh, mayors have have that I've been able to reach out to and, and talk with. Um, you know, <clears throat> also on the, recently, I, I, I gave some thought to the, a little bit about the history of Alaska, because this is really a, a historical moment where we are right now. You know, we sort of, sometimes people sort of describe their tenure in Alaska based upon which disaster they were here for. And, and that's a terrible way to acknowledge your tenure, but it sometimes happens. Um, and I look, I think back to uh, Governor Bill Egan. You know, what he would have done before the earthquake if he could have stopped it. He couldn't, of course, but we dealt with it. But if he could have stopped it, he would have. He would have done everything he could have to stop it. In 67, Governor Hickel, there was an incredible, devastating flood in Fairbanks. And if Governor Hickel could have stopped that, he would have. I know he would have. I mean, any governor would have, would have done that. I'm not raising those governors. They just happened to be governors during various times. <clears throat> governor Steve Cooper, in March 27, 1989, if he could have stopped the Exxon oil spill, he would have. He, he, he couldn't have, but he would have. This one we can stop. This one we can avoid. This one, this one we can, we don't have to do what we're doing to ourselves, And that's why I'm working like I am. That's why I'm losing my voice. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm doing everything I can, everything I can. There's nothing I won't do to avoid what I know we're going to endure if we don't make, if we don't make changes. That's why we present plans. That's why we, we put up storyboards. That's why we try to message this every way we can. And you know who gets it? Everyday Alaskans are getting it. Everyday Alaskans that come up to me say, yes, we understand we need to make some changes. So from that standpoint, it's working. It's absolutely working from the standpoint people realize uh, that, 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 that what, what we're headed for. You know, I've been under a bit of attack, uh, as you can imagine, when you do something like this. And I, that's, that goes with the, with the territory, goes with the job description, and I, and I have no issues with that. Those are the one who attack me. You know, some have said, well, you know, you you said in an ADN article that that um, that I wasn't going to uh, I wouldn't I wasn't going to touch the permanent fund I wasn't going to raise taxes I wasn't going to do any of these these things, and I probably said that there's some, there's some articles out there I did, that I didn't write that they're attributing to me and and I, I guess everybody has their own way of of uh, approaching a problem but uh, but those I did say and if somebody had asked me that I would have said no I I had no intention of doing that why would I. You know, we, we, we're, you know, close to $100 oil. You know, we, 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 can, we can resolve these issues. But, you know, I, I, rem I was reminded of, <clears throat> of a similar situation. When, when um, a gentleman by the name of Captain Scully uh, left LaGuardia in 1995 on a flight headed to uh, Seattle, if somebody had asked him, Captain Scully, do you plan to land in the Hudson River? I'm sure he would have said absolutely not. But when he took off, he hit a, a flock of birds, lost power, and he put it down the side of the river safely. Everybody walked away. It was one of the, one of the um, but he had been asked beforehand, he was at absolutely not. There's no chance I'm going to land in the Hudson River. We took off on December 1st of 2014, and we lost 80% of our income. 
we need to make some changes. We've made some changes. The no plan, no action plan is not a plan. That's a, that's a result if we do nothing. We will continue to work as hard as we can to continue to make sure that we put pieces in place that we do not have a de devastating result that will happen, not may happen, will happen under the no action plan if we don't make some changes. So I am, I am, I, you know, some, I get a lot of people that say, I bet you're sorry you're governor. I am absolutely not. I am, I absolutely love being governor of this state. There's nothing I'd rather do. And I think it's, the, and I think it's the right time for Lieutenant Governor Malott and myself to be here in the position we're in. These are not partisan decisions. They are, these are Alaskan decisions. And we have to put Alaska before any election. Alaska has got to come first, and that's what we're doing. I'm happy to answer questions, and I have people here that can. Please do. Okay, <clears throat> the bleak picture that has been painted here, obviously, as the governor said, is very real. <clears throat> there are those who say that we don't need to do it in this special session because we have a regular session upcoming within six months or so. <clears throat> we will have, in that instance, burned through additional billions that could be used to grow Alaska's future. It will likely take the entire session in 2017 to get a fiscal plan. What we will be dealing with is lost opportunity and holding Alaska's future hostage. We will have spent another entire session of the Alaska legislature focus on, focusing on a matter of such historic importance that it should have been resolved by now, and it has not. And that entire session could have been devoted to investing in growing Alaska once again, creating certainty, looking at how can we continue to create the kinds of opportunity that Alaskans seek, to stabilize our economy in an incredibly uncertain time. Alaska right now is frozen in place at a time when we should have resolved this and be growing again. And that lost opportunity is costing Alaska billions and billions. And it is costing us, in my judgment, right now, at least a decade of the kinds of things that we could have been doing to grow Alaska again. Thank you, Governor. Yep. Thank you, Brian. So let's open up for questions. John, can you open these windows? Becky. Becky Borg, the Associated Press. Governor, given, the, given how entrenched some lawmakers are in their positions right now, do you see this fifth special session as the, the last opportunity to get a fiscal plan passed with a specific legislature? Perhaps. I mean, I don't believe in, in doing the same thing over and over without any changes and expecting a different result. Uh, the different result this time is the reductions that I made what I did on the on the permanent fund dividend, uh, not a very not a very popular thing to do at all. So that that's off the table. What I did on some of the issues associated with some of the the schedule for for payments on tax credits, I took that off. So there was reason to to think that this would be a different a special session. Uh, if it's not, um, I I'm, I'm not sure that uh, uh, more of the same is going to uh, result in something different. Matt. Matt Hurst with Alaska Specialties. I, I guess I'm, I'm just wondering if you, you know, knowing what you know, and it seems like you had talked with a lot of different folks yesterday, at this point, what are you expecting out of this special session? Well, um, I, yeah, I, know, um, I certainly have heard that, um, that it could end on Friday. It seems to be the um, um, uh, inf information that, that we're getting. So if it ends on Friday, then I, I think we're going to see that, uh, uh, that nothing was gonna, is going to be addressed in the way of uh, legislation passed. What's your reaction to that? Oh, it's certainly a disappointment. You know, I mean, I mean, it's, it's got to be disappointment. I mean, don't look at these numbers and live in this world uh, that we live in and not be disappointed in that, uh, because it, it just means that, uh, as Lieutenant Governor Malott says, it, you know, that that will be another year of of lost opportunity, because it'll be next year about this time or towards the end of the session when anything uh, takes place, um, assuming it does. These are these are. 
these are hard political decisions. These are easy Alaskan decisions. If we just step over and be Alaskans a little bit, we can make these decisions. So I, I, I have every faith that it, it, I know it can be done. Uh, I absolutely know it can be done. And, I, and again, I will once more reiterate my appreciation for the Senate having passed what they passed. James? James Brooks from the Juneau Empire. Governor, you just said it can be done. Why hasn't it been done? Well, I can't answer that uh, because I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm the governor and I don't sit in on, on various meetings and caucus meetings and those kinds of things. It, it, it hasn't um, for any, any number of reasons there ha because there have not been the votes for it. I think in some respect there's, there's, the, there's a will for it, but there's, you have to, it's, it's, it's a sure numbers game. And we have been door-to-door uh, -door, uh, with legislators and, and uh, they've been very uh, um, receptive to, to uh, meet and discuss, most of them anyway. Uh, the situation, but um, I don't. I don't. I most seem to be inclined to to think that next year is the uh, uh, is the better year after the after the election. Uh, we'll find out. So, is this the legislature's fault? Well, it's, uh, we've done everything we can from our standpoint. There's no question about that. I, you know, this isn't about. We, we, you know, we cannot blame our way out of the situation we're in. We're going to act our way out of the situation. So, but we have actually presented everything we can present. You know, nine now ten different different uh, proposals that we have we have submitted to them. So there's nothing more that we couldn't have done. Andrew, Andrew Kitchman, Alaska Public Radio Network, KTOO. Um, uh, representatives have cited uh, what they're hearing from their constituents as far as resistance to cuts to the permanent fund dividend. Uh, you've focused on the fact that PFD funding could disappear in toward a couple years. Uh, if there aren't any changes, are you are you concerned or afraid that it will that will actually have to happen before the public tells uh, representatives um, that they accept the the overall fiscal plan? Well, you know, it wasn't that many weeks ago I stood here and I said I think something maybe it was a few months ago I said, do we have to go broke before we fix Alaska? And and I, I don't know. I mean, that's the essence of your questions, Andrew. Is is uh, it, you know, how how bad does it have to get before we actually before we actually do something? And um, so, um, I you know I don't know. I mean, as I've said, their constituents are my constituents. I mean, I, I represent obviously the, the the entire state, and um, so I do hear from them as well. And you know, when they when some come to me and say that the constituents just don't understand, I I ask them, you know, what have you done specifically to help your constituents understand? And and uh, uh, oftentimes the response is uh, I, uh, not much, and, and you know, perhaps because they've been here, they can't be there. I don't know what the reason, but but uh, we're doing all we can to get the get the message out. And so, um, Nat, um, I just wanted to follow up. I mean, how do you do you think it's actually reasonable to expect that an election is going to change the sort of underlying dynamic and what you've identified as problems here? I mean, it seems like. Um, you know, on the Senate side, the Senate is not likely to change much and, and be um, interested in changing the oil tax um, framework that seems to be the source of some of the frustration in the House. Um, and some of the people that are opposed to your plan in the House are like running unopposed, which seems like that's, that, that means that the election is maybe not the primary driver of their opposition here. So, I mean, is, is there that much of a reason to expect that things will change um, after an election? I guess we won't know that. Um, I was I was really pretty encouraged and excited when the Senate uh, passed the uh, uh, Senate Bill 128, the permanent fund restructuring bill. I thought that was creating some momentum. It wasn't just the administration saying it, it was it was another one of the bodies that would, had taken action. So we won't know that until uh, until after the election, uh, most likely. I don't think so. Operator, can we go to the phone? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we have our president of the line. 